Hi, I'm Matt Perrier, Dale Banks Angus in Eureka, Kansas. I'd like to invite you to our annual bull sale, Saturday, November 17th, 2018, right here, three and a half miles northwest of Eureka, Kansas, at our sale facility. Dale Banks was actually started by my ancestors right here where we're sitting in 1867. They immigrated from England and they brought with them the name Dale Banks, which was their farm back in the mother country. Uh, it started out as a sheep operation, and then of course diversified into cattle and crops. And in 1904, the second generation of their family um, purchased the first registered Angus cattle. Uh, Bert Barrier was uh, the gentleman's name who purchased those cattle and we've had registered Angus ever since. So this will mark our 114th year selling registered Angus bulls to uh, commercial cattlemen in this region and nationwide. Over a century in the Angus business means a lot to our family. We've made some tremendous friendships uh, with other Angus breeders and of course with our customers through the years. And it's, it's helped us in the breed that we're in recognize that there's more to this beef community than what we see every day here within the ranch. Um, whether it be certified Angus beef and working with consumers or the many feed yards that are after the good genetics that, uh, that our family and our breed produces, um, right down to the commercial cow-calf customers and other seed stock producers in this business, um, we get to see the total package. Uh, we get to see that there's more to it than just uh, weaning weight. We get to see that there is more to it than just carcass or end product merit. But these Angus genetics work in a variety of scenarios and it, it's, it, it's pretty, um, pretty gratifying to see that one breed and one set of genetics can do as many things and, and do them well as what they can. And that's, that's something that our family takes pride in and something that I think the industry uh, has a lot to, to uh, thank the Angus breed for. As a fifth generation rancher and a fourth generation Angus breeder, uh, that many generations breeding Angus genetics has, has driven home the fact that it is all about family and, and um, whether it be dad serving for several years as a board of director on the American Angus Association or my great grandfather and grandfather serving in a variety of roles in, in the Kansas Livestock Association. and, and you know, as we work with people, uh, we see that there's more to this than just the genetics that the cattle have to offer. There is a lot to this business that surrounds people and their character and their integrity and, and we rely on that as much as anything. So when we make those breeding decisions and selection decisions, yeah, we want to make better cattle, but we want to make more profit for our customers and ourselves in the long run. And I think that's what brings it all together. Customer service is very important to our operation, to our family. Um, if we don't make it right for the customer, then they're not going to do business with us. So we try to do as many things as we can to help their lives, help make their lives easier. Um, we offer free delivery uh, within 300 miles of the ranch. We have volume discounts at the sale. Um, we have shares of U.S. premium beef that we have uh, available for cu customers who want to feed their cattle and retain ownership. But honestly, probably the biggest service that we try to provide to our customers are bulls that go out and do the job without a lot of care, without a lot of concern, um, without a lot of problems. And that seems pretty straightforward, but as we've surveyed our customers and asked them what they want from us, yeah, it's nice when we can help them ha sell their calves, feeder calves, replacement females. It's nice when we can do some of these other add-ons, but the basics that our customers expect and the basics that we want to give those customers are bulls that will not only be top quality genetics, but they'll also be sound and functional and last for as long as they possibly can, doing their job, breeding those cows and, and getting those calves on the ground that can then express those genetics. So that's, that's our first and foremost customer service is develop these bulls in a way that they're accustomed to forage, that they are sound, that they're free wheeling and easy moving and have been up and down hills and rocks and everything else so that they can go out and do the job wherever that might be, whether it be in this region or, or outside, uh, they're going to be expected to live up to the, 
the challenges that Mother Nature and the, and the topography offer, and we want them to be ready to do that. And that's what we hear from customers time after time, that for whatever reason, whether it be how the bulls were selected genetically or how they were developed uh, from weaning on, these bulls seem to hold up better. And, and that's what we want them to do, that's what we expect them to do, and when they don't, we want to know and so we can make it right. When we breed cattle, we expect them to work for us or work for our customers all their life. And we want that to be a long life and a profitable life and a productive life. When we work with customers, we want to make that a long-term, if not lifetime, uh, relationship as well. We've got lots of buyers whose fathers, grandfathers, sisters have purchased from us for many, many years, and, and that's something that is as gratifying as nearly anything that we do. Uh, we want to provide more than just genetics. We want to provide more than just bulls. We want to provide information and a sounding board and, and um, a shoulder to cry on, whatever the case may be, um, and develop more than just a sales relationship between buyer and, and customer, or I'm sorry, between buyer and seller, but also a relationship that is a lot deeper than that and, and uh, information sharing and advisement and, and um, consultation and it may or may not be directly related to the bulls or the genetics that they're purchasing, but regardless of what that conversation is that we have with customers, I end up learning as much as what they do, I think, in a lot of those times. And so any time that we can work together as cattlemen and, um, and learn something from each other and share that information, um, I think we've done our job. It's not just to sell something but hopefully to share some of that uh, some of that knowledge as well and the more that we visit with those customers the more that we understand their needs and those of their neighbors and everyone else we frankly do a better job breeding cattle selecting cattle um, we have to have that constant flow of information back this way so we know what traits are the most important for our customer base. So we know what challenges they're starting to see, whether it be in their cow herd or even from a marketing standpoint with an industry that's moving one way or another in trends. That's the best research and development we can do is a long-term relationship and communication with those customers so we can do our jobs even better. We have a lot of tools that are at our disposal today as Angus breeders to select genetics. We've got 17 or 18 EPD traits and, and numerous dollar values and some new EPDs on the horizon. Um, I don't want to say that it's easy to go out there and jump on the computer and find a bull that fits your genetic requirements, but it's easier than it used to be when we had to scour a printed sire summary and make all kinds of calls to ask people what their contemporary groups were ratioing out of a certain sire line. So sourcing those genetics has actually probably gotten easier, but breeding cattle has probably gotten more difficult because as we put more emphasis on a number of, of traits to breed these balanced trait genetics, um, some of the basic traits become even more difficult to select for because we've taken our eye off the ball. It hasn't happened here and it won't because regardless of what level of of genetics we may achieve for any given trait or traits, if that cow can't breed in a defined breeding season, lay down and have that calf early and raise him up to weaning, those genetics go wasted. If that bull can't make it up and down the rocks to breed the cows when they need to, his genetics get wasted. And so that's why we were one of the first herds to enroll in the Angus Association's Maternal Plus program. It's why we started submitting breeding data to the association over a decade ago to try to see if we can pinpoint and find ways that we can select cattle better for things like reproductive efficiency, heifer pregnancy, hopefully cow longevity. It's why we underscore every cow within 24 hours of her calving. It's why we take weights and, and heights and body condition scores on every cow weaning. And it's why we go ahead and keep a cow until she's 10, 12, 14 years of age. Um, even though we've passed her prime of marketing her, we're just getting into her prime of actually finding some information about that, those traits like longevity and, and structural soundness and their ability to have a calf year after year after year that does the job that our customers demand. So the bulls that are out of a cow herd that's handled like we handle it, very common sense, very similarly to most of our customers, 
we believe that those decades, if not centuries, of selection for longevity, for reproductive efficiency, for soundness, translate directly into those bulls. These bulls, yeah, a lot of them are out of first calf and second calvers, but a lot of them are out of 10 and 12 and 13 year old cows that are still out there in the pasture grazing, and nursing a calf and breeding back for the next one. And, and I think that that longevity that's bred into these bulls does separate them. Can you find plenty of sire groups that are out of the same AI bulls that these are? Probably so. Can you find plenty of EPDs that may have the same levels as what these bulls? Yeah, maybe. But can you find a set of cows that's of the age that these cows are that are handled on forage 365 days of the year and expected to thrive in that environment? Anymore, that's probably a little rare. And, and that's something that differentiates this set of bulls from a lot of bulls that you'll see elsewhere. We'd welcome you to go to our website at dalebanks.com. We'll have an online version of our bull sale catalog there. Uh, we'll also have some information about the philosophies and the history of our, our program. Um, you can also find a link to not only search that catalog, but also email us for a printed version of the catalog if you would like that. We will have a few more updates on our social media accounts on Facebook and on Instagram as well, but uh, be sure and get a hold of us and we'll get you that catalog either online or in printed form. And we'd love to have you for the sale on November the 17th, 2018 here at the ranch, three and a half miles northwest of Eureka, Kansas.